Welcome to the fourth iGEM Academy video. I'm going to be going through double digests and how they're important for molecular biology. So here I've drawn another kind of typical plasmid, and the only thing that I've annotated is the promoter in red here, and then two restriction enzyme sites. So one of them is E, which is ECOR1, the same site that we reviewed in the last video, and the other one is X, XBA1. So I'm just representing that by, by the letter X. And so you can imagine that we have this, this fragment of DNA that we want to go and put into our plasmid. Uh, and we want to put it right next to the promoter. And I'll maybe make it clear that the promoter goes in that direction, right? So once the RNA polymerase grabs onto this promoter, it's going to be reading whatever information is on this side of the promoter. And so you may already see where this is going. I want to put this fragment right in front of the promoter. We, we call that downstream, right? Because things are going to be going this way, so they're downstream of the promoter. So what I'd like is it to be promoter and then ribosome binding site. So this is where the ribosome will bind in order to start translation and then coding sequence. So this is simply the sequence that actually codes for what the protein will be. So CDS coding sequence. Um, right, and so how do we do this? The problem with the restriction digest that we did last time, you can imagine maybe if this guy had, um, so here I'm, I'm drawing this green over here because it represents an ECOR1 site, right? The same site that's here. But you can imagine that if both sites were green, right? If both sites were ECOR1 and you digested this, right? So you digest the plasmid just once here and what, what are you gonna produce? You're gonna open it up, right? Either ends of the plasmid are going to be those sticky overhangs from the ECOR1, and you're going to have your, your promoter sequence kind of here, right? And then you'll have your, your X on the other side over here, the X site, right? And then you could say, oh, great, look, we can, we can just match this guy up to this guy and this guy up to that guy. So, I mean, that, that could totally work, but we won't know what orientation this goes in, right? So this guy could go right up to here and that would that would produce what what we want right so if that were the outcome then it would produce and i'm just going to draw this quickly it would produce promoter ribosome binding site and then the coding sequence and that's exactly what we want right promoter ribosome binding site coding sequence but equally probable this end could end up joining with this end and this end joining with this end and in that case what we produce is not what we want, right? So in that case, we'd produce a plasmid, sure, but now it would look like this. You'd have your promoter, you'd have a ribosome binding site over here, and you'd have your, your gene of interest, your coding sequence in the middle. So this isn't gonna work, right? Your RNA polymerase is gonna bind to the promoter and it's gonna start going downstream, but it's <laughs> it doesn't have a, a, a proper sequence to be transcribed in order to produce a gene that you want. This this will not work, right? We want this orientation. So the way to circumnavigate all of this is to have what I drew in the, in the first place, right? So we have an ECOR1 site here and an XBA1 site here, which correspond to these two sites. So now we're doing a double digest, right? I'm cutting this plasmid in two places, here and here, right? So then what will happen is the resulting, the resulting fragment here, if you kind of follow it, this end will fold down to here, and this end will fold down to here, right? So that was the XBA1 site there. So essentially, I'm just going to erase this, this little bit here, right? A little bit does end up being lost, whatever is between these two, these two sites, right? But what you end up with is an ECOR1 site on one side and an XBA1 site on the other side, right? And so then what are the possibilities? The only possible thing is that this sticky end matches with the sticky end over here. And this sticky end matches with the sticky end over here, right? These are both XBA1. They both have the, the particular overhanging fragment that match one another. And these guys have the particular overhang that, that match one another, right? And so this will be produced, but this cannot be produced, right? Because we've designed it so that only this type of plasmid will be produced. So that's the benefit of double digests, and uh, I hope that's a good summary. Uh, I'll see you in the next video.